Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. And for today's consumer tech segment with Philip Kofi Ashong, Philip will be looking at 5G and its impact on the world. He'll also be talking to students from Ghana, Spain, and Canada about their notions of what technology holds for their future. Philip Ashon is, of course, head of production here at City TV and host of City Trends. Let's take a look at his conversation and then continue Breakfast Daily. Hi there, Jifa and David, and to you, the viewers as well. This is a consumer electronics segment coming to you all the way from Schengen in China. We're currently in the Huawei headquarters, and um, it's been an incredible couple of days. We've been here for a little over a week, basically trying to understand what the future of technology looks like with reference to all the technology that Huawei is bringing to the table. And it's been a pretty incredible time with the beneficiaries of the seas for the future program. Now, one of the things that has been at the heartbeat of most of the conversations that we've had here um, has been with the future of 5G technology or the fifth generation of cellular network technology. And it's been a very heated debate at times. It's been very eye-opening at times as well. And it's been scary at times, especially when you consider um, the security that basically we will have to put in place to enjoy the benefits of 5G technology. Now, for those of you who probably need a bit of perspective, so we started off the mobile telephony journey with um, 1G, as it were, where we had the very big YAM phones, if you remember back in the day. Um, of course, um, this was analog voice mostly, and you will remember that the voice quality was not the very best, but we really didn't have much of a choice. Then we moved on to 2G, which introduced a whole digital phase of it and I'm sure most of you remember very fondly your Nokia phones back in the day um, running on Symbian and quite a number of other um, platforms back in the day. Now those ones introduce us you know to the beginnings of digital voice and digital communications. Obviously there were limitations to it and that is why the researchers delved a little deeper and then gave us 3G which basically ushered in the world or the phase of smartphones where we had all these other operating systems coming into play and then changing the way we communicate. It opened the doors obviously for internet connectivity to be made much better you know, around the world and people could communicate in one way or the other very, very easily with one another from any part of the world. Then we are now into the world of 4G technology, which is or 4G LTE technology, which is supposed to be much faster, supposed to be um, the, the way to go currently globally. It is something that we have recently been ushered into. And I'm sure as you're aware, in Ghana, two major telcos are engaged with the deployment of 4G LTE technology. What this basically has done is it has increased the speeds in terms of communication between devices. Of course, access to the internet is much faster, but then there are so many other use cases of um, these faster internet speeds but now the conversation is moving into 5g technology which is supposed to be the fifth generation of mobile telephony and cellular network connectivity and what this basically is is that it opens up the world to higher speeds and higher connections and connectivity such that things can be done within milliseconds and it's very very important that everybody becomes a part of this conversation because i'm sure you are aware of the recent ban that was placed on huawei by the u.s government a couple of weeks ago which was lifted as well a couple of days ago and it's very very clear that these conversations are very very important for us to have because that is where the rest of the world is going and the students who are here have been learning a thing or two about 5g and um, technology and the various ways by which it can be deployed but then of course they also tell us here at the huawei headquarters that they will be rolling out 6g very soon because um, research is currently ongoing in Canada on 6G technology. We haven't even gotten a grist, we haven't even gotten a grasp of what 5G is yet, but then the company is currently delving into 6G technology and its speeds. The students here have been thrilled by these conversations on 5G technology and what its impact possibly could be in a few years. And so I posed that question to them, and that is how we're going to wrap up on the show today.
So uh, 5G technology is very, very important, uh, um, especially in like uh, production. So for example, like if you want to produce um, anything you want, you can implement smart sensors that are going to track, for example, like all the abnormalities that are faced during production. And this data is going to be stored in the cloud and you can get access to it very easily. And uh, with that, you can uh, know exactly where you have a problem in your um, uh, product, so you can be able to like um, solve it directly and uh, be able to deliver a high quality product to the customer in the shortest lead time. And this is what you're really aiming for in any production system. You really want to be lean, and I think 5G really helps um, in that sense. I think 5G might have a strong impact on everybody's every, everyday life. Um, although there are some things to consider still, I think about 5G, there are a lot of challenges still, um, like ensuring transparency, for instance, accountability. So we're talking about self-driving cars and that's, that's great, but what happens if something fails? Th those are all sorts of questions that we need to address, but I think that if we do address all of these questions, then definitely 5G could have uh, strong impact on, on people's lives. So with all these um, device connections, um, it's, I think most of the gain could be through optimization because as we're able to gather um, information from different sources, uh, we might be able to improve and optimize some workflows, right? Uh, the self-driving car example, again, I'm, I'm coming back to that example, but I think it's a, it's a good example that um, we could, theoretically, uh, even have safer driving with, with self-driving cars than with human drivers. Um, although, I mean, to get there, we'll need to have, obviously, some... Uh, there are still technological challenges, but I think, that, I think we can get there, definitely. This robot and stuff um, doing surgery, making this, they, they are saving lives, like they make things very fast, like they save lives and then let's say this live video something, a doctor in China communicating with someone in Ghana, doing um, surgery and stuff, like that's the main point, the, the health part is very important to me. So I think that 5G is much more than the next generational step in mobile data. I think it is going to be a transformational change to society as we know it, and it's the opportunity for mobile to really take over our entire world. Um, I think it's going to impact every industry that you can imagine, and probably some industries that don't even exist yet. From healthcare, to energy, to financial services and media, to things like smart cities, which we're seeing pop up all over the world. Um, I think in healthcare specifically, it's going to impact it um, greatly, and, and you're going to see just an incredible uh, improvement in the way that we see healthcare in the world today. I think you're going to see things like small sensors empower things like chronic condition management and remote patient monitoring to not only improve the quality of care but reduce the cost of it. You're going to see us be able to collect and use large amounts of patient data to use analytics to improve the quality of care that we're offering. You're going to see things like remote diagnostics and imaging, remote surgery, teleconferencing become uh, such a fundamental part of healthcare as we know it to really allow accessibility of healthcare to people in remote areas such as the Arctic or small islands, but also allow people like surgeons who have a very unique skill set that might live in Australia to perform surgeries halfway across the world where people might not be able to travel to get their services. So I think that you can see all of the opportunities in 5G through the latency, through the high reliability, through the increased throughput, or in the reduced cost. Um, obviously, there's a long way to go in terms of the investment that needs to happen to help us get there, but I think every industry and every telecommunications partner will um, be critical in, in making it happen. In my opinion, using Ghana as reference from the many things I've seen so far, taking the um, deployment of 5G, let's say when you come to the driverless cars, most of the times in Ghana there are issues of accidents that really happened. But considering 5G being deployed in these cars, where we get to have them being driverless and being able to react in one millisecond is going to be of great advantage to us, whereby all these accidents will be reduced. 
So just in that aspect, I see 5G to be of great value to us. And it being used in the whole world would also be very, very advantageous to us all. That's not just the only place it could be deployed. We get to see it. Let's say that was just about cars, but we get to have even a smart home where you are able to regulate everything with, um, let's say, your mobile phone, everything communicating with each other, known as the Internet of Things, going to us getting um, a smart city and then in the long run, a smart world. So 5G would be very great. My only problem and concern was like, I was thinking, what would happen? Should there be um, a breakdown or shutdown or even um, a break in internet? Cause one second could kill someone. So yeah, that is just my only challenge as now. But I believe even as we endeavor to bring 5G, I'm not the only one with this thought and measures will be put in place. And with that, I see the future very bright with 5G and I hope for it to get to Ghana and the whole world as a whole. Yeah, so I mean, from what I've seen so far, I think the biggest impact that I'm seeing that's gonna happen is that a lot of the mundane tasks and the mundane products that we use today are gonna to become a lot more intelligent than we possibly could have had them be before. And so that means things like common items and like appliances in your household or your vehicle or how you interface with your work um, you know, systems and whatnot are gonna become more automated and intelligent. And what ultimately I think that's gonna do is it's gonna bring increased productivity levels to populations, which I think then creates the opportunity for people to do new tasks, create new tasks and innovate further to kind of build on the productivity that they've just unleashed from 5G. So that's the biggest impact I think it'll have. Yes, and so I think that's actually a really big question in Canada right now. And one of the things we've sort of learned throughout, um, throughout our courses in China is how different populations actually have very different views about privacy and the security of their data. And for example, a country like Canada takes it very seriously. And so I think that potentially the way that 5G is actually perceived in Canada will be different from other countries because we'll want to still protect a lot of that data that could be collected through the network and, and reutilized to better us. We'll want to protect that data because we won't want to give it all up. And so I think it's going to become very localized in terms of how we actually um, use 5G and how it's enabled. Whereas, you know, populations like China where people are more willing to give up their data, they're kind of willing to take a little bit of a risk in terms of security for the sake of having um, higher performance of the network and higher performance in terms of the kinds of suggestions and things that they can get from the network um, in return. And so I think ultimately there are definitely security risks and potential vulnerabilities, and those will have to be handled from a regulatory standpoint on a, on a local basis. And so we'll kind of see how different populations really want to utilize the potential of the network. That 5G is uh, basically a new uh, efficient way to use all the technologies. For me, 5G is all about speed. Um, it's going to increase uh, up to 66 times uh, the speed of 4G, the previous technology. And I think uh, it's going to allow other technologies like IoT, uh, big data, uh, to work in a more efficient way. Um, for me, uh, the, the use will be in uh, the everyday um, activities. For example, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you always turn the alarm off, uh, you uh, take a shower, you have breakfast, you take your car. And so the idea of 5G is to connect all these activities so that we can use our time more efficiently and to do things uh, in a more automatized way. Um, with that, uh, we can reduce the human uh, mistakes and we can improve the efficiency of our time. So there's a lot of things that 5G can help us with and it's going to impact the world. One of the main things that I think that is really going to be uh, impacted by 5G is self-driving cars. So firstly, with the network of 5G, self-driving cars will become a reality because 5G has a low lat latency of around one millisecond. So cars are going to be able to be connected to the cloud. They're going to be sending information and bits of information to each other instantaneously. So for example, let's say there's a car driving around is going to be able to monitor the traffic, it's going to be able to see what's going on, on around it and send bits of information to the cloud, uh, reducing uh, traffic jams, reducing accidents. So it's really like a crucial step to, to have in a smart city. 
So, Jifa and David, from the other side of the wall, um, this is how we're going to end the consumer technology segment of the show. I do hope um, for our viewers that you picked up a thing or two, learned a thing or two. And um, next week, I'll be back in the studio for us to have more conversations about some of the best consumer technology available to you right now. So that's Philip Kofi Ashong dropping some knowledge as far as 5G technology is concerned all the way from China. Now you can catch Philip on City Trends on Tuesdays at 97.3 City FM and he's also head of production here at City TV. Next week Wednesday he'll be in studio with us hopefully with some more knowledge on consumer technology.